everybody, or good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for Firehouse on Live during this quarantine. It's a beautiful Sunday. We're so excited for you to be joining joining us today. So excited for the word that God has given Brother Marcus to share with you all today. I'm just going to start with a scripture. So I will be reading Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Lord, Lord Jesus, just we thank you for another day. We thank you for this beautiful Sunday. We thank you that you are good even in the midst of our trials and tribulations and that you will give us rest even when things seem hard. We thank you for your sacrifice, your love, your grace, your mercy, your endless faithfulness. I just ask that you allow your Holy Spirit to move through this service today. We give the service over to you. We set our pride aside. I ask that you just touch each and every person who is watching this live, no matter where they are. And we just thank you for this wonderful word we will be receiving from you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, one second. Is it turned off? Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Why you turn into wine? Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Out of the darkness we shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no Oh, no. And if I got his business, then we 
singer i'm definitely not a great singer but man y'all see i love worship god because regardless he is worthy i'm gonna get straight into the message that i have for you guys today i'm pretty excited about this message it's something that god just put on my heart and i begin to look into it and explore and i've preached uh, this message before but it's a little bit different so i want you to understand today that you our kingdom. You're not insignificant. You are kingdom. All right. I'm going to give you a lot of Bible today. Um, and you can follow along in your Bible. Uh, take notes if you want. So the first thing I want to say that God gave me, right? Now this right here is my military uniform. Now this is the uniform that we did all the dirty work in. This is the uniform we did all the deployments in. This is the uniform that people die in. This is the uniform that we conquered obstacles in. And this is the, the get dirty uniform. And some of you might, right now, you might be feeling like it's been that season. This is the fight uniform. This is the battle uniform. And in order to get this nice, pretty dress uniform, you gotta wear this uniform first. Everything that I accomplish in this uniform, all right, there's badges and tabs that get put on a pretty uniform. Now, a lot of people, they like to walk around and act like they've always had this uniform on. They've always had it all together. They've always had all these badges. But the reality is we all had to go through a fight season, all right? And just because you see somebody in this uniform, just because you see somebody struggling, just because you see somebody going through it, it doesn't mean that you look down on them and judge them because you don't know who they are in the kingdom. So a lot of times we look at people from a carnal perspective, but in the kingdom, all right, there's somebody. In the kingdom, there is a rank structure. We have to be very careful who we dishonor in the kingdom. Now, I want you guys to understand something. I'm going to lay a foundation before I start preaching. The Bible is not a religious book, okay? It's a contract. It's a legal document. It's like the Constitution of the United States of America, all right? Kingdom is not religion, okay? Kingdom is not religion. Right here, I have some old documents from when I was in the military. I would fill this out, and when I filled it out, it gave me the authority to go on leave. It gave me the authority to go out and to visit my family, okay? And just like these documents gave me authority to do stuff, the Word of God gives you authority as well, but you've got to be familiar with it, all right? So when you are a citizen of the kingdom, just like you are a citizen of the United States, when you are a citizen of the United States, you get to vote you have the right to go apply for welfare. You have the right to go apply for aid. You've got the right to go apply for office. It's the same thing when you are a citizen of the kingdom of God. It gives you rights and your rights are laid out in the word of God. You have the right to be victorious. You have the right to overcome. You have the right to worship God. You have the right to get a breakthrough. You have the right to have the victory according to the legal document, which is the constitution of the kingdom. Matthew 6.10, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. 
It was always God's will to establish his kingdom on the earth. It was never about religion. It was never about churches. It was never about deacons. It was about kingdom. Jesus preached kingdom more than anything else. And he says here, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As kingdom children, I heard the man of God say this before. It's kind of like when people immigrate from other countries and they come to America and you have Jamaicans in New York. But when they came to New York, they set up a Jamaican restaurant. So even though they left their place where they live, they brought their culture, they brought their kingdom with them, and they set it up in New York. So as children of God, it's the same thing with us. There's a kingdom mindset. There's a kingdom culture that should go before us, that should come with us. When we step into a spot, we should bring the kingdom of God with us. We should bring the word of God, the, the, um, the statute of God, the, what he says in his word, that should be with us everywhere we go. Kingdom should influence everything else And yes there's other kingdoms in this world But when we step in as sons and daughters of the kingdom That should come with us and we should influence them Now watch this Matthew 13, 51, 53 Jesus saying to them Have ye understood all these things? They say unto him, yea Lord then said he unto them, therefore, every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is in a householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. Watch this in the Message Bible. He said, then you see how every student well trained in God's kingdom is like the owner of a general store who can put his hands on anything you need, old or new, exactly when you need it. All right, so he's saying here that when you are well trained in the kingdom, when I get familiar with the constitution of the kingdom, the document of the kingdom, it's just like if I own a general store and I can go in at any time and grab whatever I want. If I need some sugar, I can go grab the sugar. If I need some cereal, I can go grab some cereal. If I need some milk, I can grow, grab some milk because I own the store. So he says whoever is well trained in the kingdom it's just like they have a store that they can go get access to anything at any time this is why he says that whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven because as a kingdom citizen i have access to something through the constitution of the word of God. So what does that mean for you, my brothers and sisters? No matter what we're going through or what's going on in the world, because I'm a kingdom citizen, if I need joy, I can go into his presence and get it. If I need peace, I can go into his presence and get it. I don't have to sit around and let my feelings and my emotions be dictated by my circumstance or what's going on around me because when I know the king when I live the kingdom, when I recognize who I am in the kingdom, when I understand the constitution of the kingdom, I have authority, I have dominion, I have access. That's why he said, I will come and give you the keys to the kingdom. I can unlock things in the spirit. I can shift things in the spirit and then I see the fruit. Then I see the evidence manifest itself in my life. That's why the Bible says he gives you peace that passes all understanding. Brother Marcus, we're in a stormy season right now and the boat is rocking, but why are you so cool? Why are you at peace? They just threw you in the lion's den. They just threatened to throw you in the fire. You've got to face Goliath when you realize that you are a part of the kingdom of God, it changes the way you see everything else. Now, check this out. Here's an important part. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. But you have to seek first the kingdom of God, not a relationship, not a position in the church, not friends, not cliques. I've got to seek ye first the kingdom of God, and then he'll take care of everything else. So my foundation is kingdom. Now watch this. 
Then he says in Matthew 19, 14 through 16, but Jesus said, suffer little children and forbid them not to come unto me for of such is the kingdom of heaven. He said, you got to be like a child. He said, this is the ones that possess the kingdom of God. And then in John 3, 3, Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Why was he saying that you've got to be like a child? Why was he saying that you have to be born again? Well, the reason this was, was because of this. Because a child, when my son comes to me and I tell him, you can do this, he believes it because I'm his father and he's he's looking up to me and he believes what his father says. And so he's looking for somebody who will come to him like a child. And he's saying, if I told you that you can walk on water, you can. If I told you I'll never leave you nor forsake you, I won't. If I told you greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, that is the truth. And what he's looking for is for somebody to believe him at his word. He's looking for someone who can come in like a child. And yes, I've been broken. Yes, I've been rejected. Yes, I've been through storm, stress, and trials. But that doesn't change my childlike belief in God. I can take a licking and keep on ticking. I can go through the storm and keep on worshiping. I can keep on seeking. I can keep on pressing. I can keep on running because I have childlike faith that I believe God. I believe God no matter what he says. I believe God no matter what it looks like. I believe God. God, no matter what I'm going through, I believe God, no matter what's on the news, I believe God, no matter what people say, I believe God, no matter who doesn't like it, I believe God, no matter who doesn't agree, I believe God, like a child, believes his father. So when he said that you have to be born again, he's saying, you, you got to take off the old man. You've got to take off your old understanding and your feelings and, and your emotions because what a lot of people do is, well, I feel, I feel, I think, I think, and they make their feelings a God. They make their ideologies a God, and it's all about how I feel. It's all about the way that I see things. It's all about me, 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 and he's saying, no, I want you to take that off and come to me as a child. See, when, when a child comes out the womb, they don't know anything about anything. They're wide open to learn. That's why there's many studies that say, you know, one of the most crucial times for a child is those first couple of years. You know, depending on how you you um, raise that child and, and teach that child and talk to that child, you're shaping their personality in those first couple of years. So he's really saying, I, I don't, you know, you're going to come to me messed up with the cares of this life, but cast them on me and let me make you new. Let me make you white as snow and let me give you a fresh Download a kingdom download. Now, we are the kingdom. Luke 17 20. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, Lo here, lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Now, this is where we get it wrong, right? Now, these glasses represent a carnal vision. I look kind of cool, a little bit. Not quite, but a little <laughs> bit. Now, check this out. The Pharisees, they had a certain perspective. They had a certain view. And, and what the Lord is saying, sometimes we come to him and we've got our own ideas of how things should be. And we've got our own agenda. And, and the problem is we try to build within our own perspective and our own feelings. And he's like, that's like building your house on the sand. So when you come to me, I, I want you to take it off. Okay? Take off whatever you had in mind and surrender that. Give me the vision that you had and lay it down at the altar and let me expand your mind. Because check this out. This is what happens with a lot of us. Let's say this is your, your ideologies, your feelings, your emotions, right? Bam. And that's your perspective. So now I'm locked in. Now, my wife is over there to the left of me, but I can't see her, right? Because I'm so focused on what I got. And the Lord is saying, you think that your way is the only way. Because this is all I can see from here to here. Now, here's the crazy part. Because this is all I can see, because my vision is limited, I'm only going to use, I'm only going to take advantage, I'm only going to think 
the options I have are right here. That's good. Now check it. Because my vision is limited, I say, well, I guess this is all I got to work with. This is all I got to work with. This is all I got to work with. And the Lord is saying, if you humbled yourself and you allowed me to expand your vision, you would see to the left, you've got a light set, you've got a wife, you've got a camera, you've got a computer, you've got a printer. But all the time you was thinking, well, all I got to work with right here is a hard drive and a shoebox. And you can apply that to anything in your life because we can put our limits on God. You say, well, all I got to choose to date from is this right here. And he's saying, no, 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 no. If, if you get away from your feelings and what you think Think about it and let me take the blinders off. I'll show you a whole nother world. Some of you, it's just like if I looked out this window and I had these blockers on and the only thing I could see was a Wendy's and a McDonald's. And I said, man, I'm hungry, but the only thing for me to eat that I can see is Wendy's and McDonald's. But if I took the blinders off, I would see there's an Applebee's over there and there's a Long John Silver over there. I don't have to eat at what's in front of me. Check this out. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I don't have to be bitter just yes. because it looks like I need to be bitter. I don't have to be afraid just because the news yes. is afraid. I don't have to live my whole life thinking that I'm stupid just because somebody told me I was stupid. When I'm part of the kingdom, when I go down in the name of Jesus, he transforms my mind and he begins to remove the blockers and now I once was blind but now I can see. I used to see myself as nobody could ever love me. I used to see myself that I could never graduate from college. I used to see myself that I would never get over the divorce. I, I used to yes. see myself that I would never get to the promised land but it's something about when you know who you are in the kingdom the blinders come off. Hallelujah. And this is why I can say greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Because when I got the blinders on, I'm looking at Goliath and I'm saying, man, he's big. But then when I take the blinders off, I see the kingdom of God, the army of God, the angels of God, the people of God are with me. But just like the Pharisees, now watch this. I went and bought the kitty glasses. I'm going to give them to my son. Now these look, these actually kind of look better. It's kind of <laughs> going against what I had in mind. No, I'm playing. Titty glasses, small vision. So I limit God to, to my small, to my tiny vision. And the Lord is saying, the, that, that, that small vision you have, it's not really fitting on your face. The, the vision that I got for you is bigger, okay? And, and, and the vision that you have, it don't really match up with what, what I had in mind for you. The person that you want to date, it, it don't really match up with what I had in mind for you. The, the vision that you're looking at, it don't really match up with what I, it don't really fit who I created you to be. And that's the problem with yes. some of us. We're allowing somebody else to come and take their vision and their perspective and yes. their ideas and put it on us. And the Lord is saying, uh-uh, that's too small for you, or that's not correct for you. I need you to come this way. Take off what other people had in mind. Yes. Take off other people's opinions. Come before me naked and let me show you what I got for you. Now watch this. The other problem is when you don't see things kingdom, the same way I told you, you might see somebody in the fight, right? Right? But you don't see who they are in the kingdom. See, see, when, when you walk in the spirit, when you walk with kingdom vision, I could see somebody struggling. I could see somebody going through the test. I could come in on a part of the story where they weren't at their best and they were fighting. But that doesn't mean that they're not something special in the kingdom. That's right. So watch. It goes both ways. When I put on my carnal vision, I can see certain things and I say, man, this looks like something I need to pour my time into. This looks like something I need to pour my love into. This looks like something I need to pour my hope into. When I'm looking at it and I'm observing it, it looks like a good idea, but the thing is, it's not a God idea because see, when, when you walk in kingdom, he opens your eyes to the spirit. And so what looks like a good idea, God will open your eyes and say, now look, I know you didn't see it at first because it was camouflaged, but there's a couple of holes back here. There's a, there's a couple of cuts back here. There's a couple of wounds. I know they look like that's somebody I should date. 
I know it looks like it's a good an opportunity. And you say, man, I want to pour my time and I want to pour my resources and I want to pour my love. And the Lord is saying, if you do that, it's going to waste out. It's going to leak. Now, it came dress yes. looking like something good. But the reality, there's all kinds of holes. There's all kinds of wounds. And everything you pour in is going to leak out. And what happens when we're not thinking kingdom, remember he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. When we pour and it starts leaking out and it's wasting, we're saying, God, why, why, why did this happen? I, I gave them my heart and, 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 and I gave it my time and, and I sacrificed and I did this yes. and I did that. But he said, you didn't do it as part of the kingdom. You did it from your feelings, your emotions, and that's why your seed did not fall on good ground. When yes. you are a part of the kingdom, just like we said, this is the constitution. This is the legal document. This is the blueprint. He will show you. He's, oh, man. I feel the Holy Ghost. Let me show you something. I opened right to it. <laughs> it. The verse just hit my mind. I opened the Bible and there it was. Next page, Psalms 23. I literally opened right to it. This That just makes me excited. I didn't have this plan. Thank you, Jesus. Kingdom. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in clean pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. So when I'm a kingdom child, he says that I will lead you to the green pastures. I will lead you to the still waters. I will lead you to the promised land. I will lead you to the good places. Why? Because you are a child of the king of kings. And the earth is the fullness. Everything in the earth belongs to me. I'll show you where the good ground is. I'll show you where the bad ground is because you are my child. He said, he restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Do you know what that means? I use this example all the time. For his name's sake. If this tablet was out there, it says Samsung, and it was messed up, and it was jacked up, nobody would want to buy Samsung anymore because Samsung would get a reputation for failing. So what God is saying in this verse, he says, I I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lead you in the path of righteousness for my name's sake. So when people see you and they see that you're a child of God and they see that you're branded and you're a yes. Jesus follower, I'm going to lead you to the green pasture. I'm going to lead you to the victory. I'm going to lead you to the good place for my namesake. So my name has a reputation among the earth. And that's wow. why I said, just like immigrants come from Puerto Rico and Jamaica and they come to New York and they set up a Jamaican restaurant or a Puerto Rican restaurant, it's the same thing with the kingdom with the children of God I go into the dark places and I set up the kingdom of God I go into the wicked places and I reflect the kingdom of God the culture of the kingdom the character of Christ oh thank you Jesus so I ask you this Jesus oh we're going to go back just a little bit before I forget because I want you to catch this. He told the Pharisees, the kingdom of God is within you. Mm -hmm. so, so they were looking for a king to come down with a sword and kill the Romans. Mm -hmm. They weren't looking for Jesus, right? Sometimes we crucify the blessing and we kill the move of God because it doesn't look like how we thought it should look. Right? He, he came into your church with this on, but you thought he should have had that on. And because he has this on, you don't want to use him. But the truth is, he's a general. She's a general in the kingdom. That's what the Pharisees did. So you reject the move of God in ignorance because you don't see in the spirit. And so Jesus told them, he said, look, the kingdom is already within you. And then watch this in Luke 10, 9. He told the disciples, and heal the sick that are therein. And say unto them, the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. He's telling his disciples, I want you to go out. I want you to heal. I want you to do this. And, and when you do these things, you tell the people, this is on behalf of the kingdom. We are ambassadors of the kingdom. We are representation of the kingdom. We have kingdom rights. We have kingdom power. We have kingdom authority. And everywhere we go, we represent the kingdom. So when you get healed, it's not, oh man, I, I, should I go there? It's not about denomination. It's about kingdom. It's not about who thinks they've got all the 
answers and the brand of God who is operating in the kingdom, who is flowing in the kingdom, who is walking in kingdom power, who is walking in kingdom authority. He says, when you go to these places, let them know that the kingdom has come nigh you. The kingdom is in you. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is in you. When you realize that, you walk around kingdom-minded and you walk around differently. That's why the Bible says you are a peculiar people because I'm in the world, the Bible says, but I'm not of the world. So I'm going through the same storm that the world is going through. I, I see the same issues and obstacles that the world sees, but my resources come from another kingdom. My power comes from another kingdom. My hope comes from another kingdom. My joy comes from another kingdom. So the question to you is this. If I'm walking around depressed like the rest of the world, and I'm walking around afraid like the rest of the world, and I'm walking around depressed and defeated and scared and miserable, or am I truly a child of the kingdom? Because the Bible tells me this is the conceit. People read the Bible wrong. They read it as a bunch of religious laws. But really, this is just giving you revelation to what the kingdom of God is. That's right. So I have access. You have access to yes. everything that is in here. And he does not discriminate. That's right. So why, if I am part of the kingdom of God, am I responding like the world? Why, if I'm part of the kingdom of God, do I try to do things like the world? Why, if I'm part of the kingdom of God, and he says they will hate you for my name's sake, why am I looking for the world's approval? So I ask you this, as I get ready to close, which lens are you looking through? Mm -hmm. Is it a stained lens? Is it a hurt lens? It is a feelings lens. Is it a stress lens? Is it a rejection lens? Is it a common sense lens? Check this out. When Peter stepped off the boat, he had a kingdom lens on. When David went to fight Goliath, he had a kingdom lens on. That's right. If you have a fear lens or a common sense lens or a rejection lens, you're never going to step off the boat. You're never going to want to look different. You're never going to want to look crazy because faith will make you look crazy. 1 Corinthians 2.16 For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Now remember, think of it like an Amazon warehouse. I go on Amazon, I order something, it comes to my house. The Bible says in Matthew 18.18 Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever ye loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. He said, I've come to give you the keys of the kingdom. No matter what you see going on in the earth, I can bind it and I can loose it because I have authority from the constitution of the kingdom, which is the Bible, which is the word of God. And that's the problem. People read it as a religious book of rules okay. instead of reading it as the constitution that gives me my right to unlock things in the spirit. Oh, no, no, devil. You can't just act any type of way here because I'm kingdom. Oh, no, devil, you can't just steal my joy because I'm kingdom. It's like a police officer that has a badge. He has authority. If I walk outside and I try to arrest one of those guys right now, if they're bigger than me, they'll probably try to beat me up. But if I walk outside and I show them a badge, they see that badge and they realize there's a force behind that badge. And so they're probably going to do what I say. It's the same thing when you're a child of the king. I walk in kingdom authority. David walked to Goliath in kingdom authority because he knew there was a force behind the stone. There was a force behind the bath. There was a force behind what comes out of your mouth. That's why the Bible says there's life and death in the what? Power of the tongue. That's why I got to change the way that I speak to myself. When I wake up and I look in the mirror and the enemy's trying to tell me all this stuff, I got to change the way I see myself. I got to change the way I talk to myself. And some people going to think I'm arrogant. When they see me walking with that David swag, they're going to think I'm arrogant. When they see me stepping off the boat like Peter, they're going to think I'm arrogant. I'm not arrogant. I'm kingdom. But people who don't walk in kingdom don't think you're arrogant. 
That's what your response need to be. When you give somebody your dream, you give somebody the vision, and they start talking crazy, and they start talking, oh, you acting brand new, and you done changed up, and you think you're better than me. No, 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 no. I don't think I'm better than you. I think that I'm kingdom. Oh, what denomination are you? I'm kingdom. Why do you have that power? Because the kingdom, Jesus preached kingdom more than anything else. I ask you again to evaluate yourself and say, man, what lens have I been looking at my life through? Is it the lens of what other people had in mind? Is it the lens of my insecurity, my fear, my stress, my worries? Is it the lens of my past? Is it the lens of what my mama said, what my daddy said, what happened to me? Or is it the lens of kingdom? A lot of people cannot understand what is going on in the world when they see the things that are going on in the world because they look at it through the lens of culture and they look at it through the lens of race and they look at it through the lens of history and they can't see through the lens of kingdom because their vision is tainted. Is your vision tainted, my brothers and sisters? Every day, Brother Marcus asks God, Lord, don't let my vision be tainted. Protect me. Creating me a clean heart, renewing me a right spirit. Father, I thank you right now for all of my brothers and sisters who joined us for this firehouse service today. Lord, this world has a lot of things that are going on, but help us to view it through the lens of kingdom. Help us to view your people through the lens of kingdom. No matter what color, no matter what race, let there be unity in the kingdom, Father. Help us not to discriminate. Help us not to be prejudiced. Help us not to look down on others, which I want to read one more verse to you guys, and we will end this video. No matter your position in the kingdom, watch this, Psalms 8410. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. I'm content to be a doorkeeper in the kingdom because it's better than whatever the world has to offer. But the truth is I wasn't always a doorkeeper or whatever it is you are in the kingdom. We all were in that world. And Jesus had to die for every single one of us, no matter where we are now, no matter what our position is, no matter what our rank is in the spirit. We all started here in the fight. We all started here with the cross. And we got to remember that. Lord, I thank you for my brothers and sisters. Let them be encouraged as we go through this season. Continue to shape us, make us, mold us, and create us into what you would have us to be. Help us to walk in kingdom authority and kingdom power. Help us, Lord God, to realize that we have power to come against the kingdoms on this earth and the darkness in this earth and the darkness in our homes and the darkness in our mind. We do have power. We do have authority. And the devil does not want us to realize it. He does not want us to see ourselves the way that you see us. He does not want us to move in kingdom power and authority. He does not want us to walk around, Father, the way that you created it to be from the very beginning. From the very beginning, it was never about church. It was about relationship with you and your kingdom. You brought your kingdom down to this earth. And because of sin, Father, it got in the way. But you made a way by sending your son for us to access your presence and to have your spirit inside of us. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. David said, I encourage myself in the Lord. Father, when we feel down and we feel heavy and we feel worried and we feel stressed, Lord, help us to remind ourselves that the spirit of the living God, the spirit of the creator of this universe, the spirit of the one who holds the sun and the stars in his hands and all of the oceans and all of the mountains, Father, is living in us. You breathe in Adam from the very beginning. That was your purpose, intimacy with you. You gave Adam dominion. You gave Adam authority. And then you came from the Old Testament to the New Testament, and you redid the process. You breathe on us again. Acts 1-8, you said we shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon us. We have power. We have authority. No matter what our circumstance, no matter what we face, no matter what our situation our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Our God is higher than any other as we sung at the beginning of this service. And we believe that. He is the king of kings. All kingdoms on this earth will bow before the king. Every knee will bow. 
every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I love you guys. Be blessed. Be encouraged. Have a wonderful Sunday afternoon in Jesus' name.